Hi guys, hope you're well. I'm super excited today to share with you my first ever unboxing video on my channel. An amazing company called Bush Gear has sent me loads of goodies in a box to see and showcase and test out. So uh, yeah, I'm super excited. Now Bush Gear is an online outdoor equipment and clothing shop, but what sets them apart from the rest is that they work with brands like Barma and Redback, I think it is. So they sell a lot of products made from kangaroo leather. Now the special properties of kangaroo leather is that it's very lightweight for how heavy duty it is or um, hard wearing. I just want to showcase some of the products that they've sent me so you can see if you might be interested in some of them. If you do like any of the products, uh, there will be a link in the description to every single product in this video and uh, the Bush Gear website just to make your life easier. But anyway, let's see what goodies they've sent me. So firstly, they've sent me some kangaroo leather belts, which is really cool. Oh, brown, lovely. They do these in two colors, I think. Uh, one's brown and then one's black. But these are all handmade, superior quality. And it's incredibly light. It's unbelievably light. It's got a very strong metal buckle, but yeah, the workmanship of it, the quality is amazing. There is something about kangaroo leather though, it does have a totally different smell to any other leather you've smelt. It's not bad, I'm not saying it's bad, it's just that uh, you know it's kangaroo leather. It's nice, nice leather. Very strong and just incredibly light. You just don't respect the weight because when you've had leather belts before it's just really weighty isn't it? And you just thought sort of respect like oh yeah that's good quality leather. But then this it just feels like paper but it's really strong they were kind enough to send me two one for me and one for lily in the same style because i this is my favorite style to be honest this is the bowl main style so this is how it looks on me and this is how it looks on lily they can be both men and women's this is a traditional australian drover's belt the belt is made from 12 hand plaited strands of genuine kangaroo leather kangaroo leather is extremely hard wearing and tough this retails at $59.95, but actually at the time of shooting this video, it's retailing at $34.95. So um, if you like it, go over and get it straight away. If you don't, fair enough, because they've got another style as well. Another one, it's such a good box. The design of this box is so good. Premium Australian kangaroo leather, high strength, superior quality. Made from genuine kangaroo tail leather feels very strong. I've never seen a belt like this before actually. Oh I know what it reminds me of. That's not a knife. That's a knife. But I do love that style. I, I do love it. These are actually dress belts guys. I am going to be wearing these as dress belts as well because I don't really want to ruin them. However I'll see how they go and I, I think I'll choose one to actually uh, wear out on my trips as well. Because what I do is I hang my heavy camera on my belt and I really need the strength of it. These will be sufficient, these will suffice the, uh, the weight of my heavy duty camera, but I don't want to ruin it <laughs> because uh, the belt that I'm using for that at the minute is uh, a buffalo belt, super heavy. I wish I could use these to be honest because that buffalo leather is so thick and heavy, it's unbelievable. These like you don't even feel these on you so i might make the plunge and just use one as my my camera belt don't know i don't want to ruin it though i don't want to ruin it yeah <laughs> but i will be putting uh, knives on them and all sorts like that they will take good knives and everything and it won't stretch out it's just that when i've had my heavy duty camera on the other it's warped the leather uh, and that's been very very worrying really this is the broken hill got kangaroo on it to tell you it's genuine kangaroo leather. Now one difference between the two styles is that the Broken Hill actually has a solid brass buckle but this is actually the same style as this so it's really kept in style. So this is slightly heavier than this but still both belts are like the most lightweight belts I've ever ever had ever owned. The Broken Hill one is $34.95 as well and I believe on the belts that the price includes UK delivery as well, so it's a bonus, it's a bonus. Farmer have recreated an iconic Australian cattleman's belt, 32 millimeters wide, 
using linked pieces of kangaroo tail leather and solid brass buckles, and they are extra supple compared to most leather belts, and will mould to the shape of your waist very quickly. Marks and scratches on our kangaroo leather are considered a natural feature. Cows don't really get into many fights, and cows don't really have claws to fight with, but kangaroos, they do. <laughs> and they do uh, pack a punch with their hind legs to each other, and uh, dependent on like what life it's had basically, if it's been fighting other kangaroos, uh, you do tend to get natural features of like uh, scratching on the leather and stuff like that. I really like this as a personal preference. Like even on my barma hat, my old barma hat, it's got one or two scratches on it, you can't really see it there. I just love the look of it. So it really depends on your personal preference for that one. Something to note about the belt sizing is that on the website they suggest you go two inches more than your actually actual waist size. So I'm a 32, so I would naturally go for a 34. But um, I actually asked for a 36 and it fits me perfectly, especially like if you are tucking in a lot of layers into your trousers when you're going out backpacking, hiking, like I've got probably three layers on and then I tuck in two. Um, which sort of fills it out a bit, if you know what I mean. Um, so this gives me loads of room. So I end up about in the middle when I've got the layers on. And then without the layers, I'm near the end. Uh, so really their recommendation of going two inches higher will put you in the middle, really. Um, so yeah, that's just something to note. What else have they sent me? Still on the theme of kangaroo leather, they've sent me the minimalist um, wallet. And funnily enough, I've been wanting one of these for ages. I can't believe they sent me one. I've been wanting a new wallet anyway for ages, but uh, my old wallet is a massive like, open one and it's just too heavy, too big for any pocket nowadays. Because I used to wear a lot of jackets and have it on the inside, but now I tend to want it in my, my jeans pocket, my trouser pocket. Um, and this is fantastic. So this is for like the very modern day man where you don't really carry out around cash. ID cards, business cards, debit card, and just pay everything electronically. This is the Barma Minimalist M1 Kangaroo Wallet with RFID protection. This retails at $29.95. Made from premium grade ethically sourced kangaroo hide, these Barma wallets are smart functional and built to last. That's very good, built to last. The built-in lining of this wallet is the RFID technology, which is the radio frequency, is it identification? Identification, blocking. Um, so it means that no one passing you on the street can like, um, you know, with this contactless cards nowadays, they can't just take money off your card just by walking past you. So it's very important nowadays because that could be a scam in the future. Not like I'm endorsing it or anything, but yeah. And this comes in dark brown or black. The wallet is divided into two sections. The wallet can comfortably hold up to seven cards and several loose folded banknotes. The front section features a unique thumb hole design, which allows you to easily slip the top most card in and out of the wallet. So what I like to do is keep my company business cards on my bank card in the front. And especially because my logo looks really cool in the little thumb thing. <laughs> so you're meant to like, use the thumb, get it out really easy, it works. Driver's license and then some money notes in the back. And I've been pleasantly surprised that this is now my go-to wallet. I use this every day now. Then they've also sent me the auto lock. Now I don't really use it for a bike. I haven't got a bike, but um, I see this is very valuable to me for all my outdoor equipment. So if I want to um, lock up my bag or anything like that, it's lightweight, compact, uh, for how strong and durable it is, it's very lightweight again. So there's a bit of a running theme here, strong but lightweight. It's great for outdoors because there's a lot of you out there that want to uh, limit how much weight you're taking. This is the medium size, this is 30 inches. It comes in three different sizes. It's uh, 18 inch, 30 inches or 60 inches. So this is the nice medium size for cycling, kayaking, canoeing, uh, camping and a quad bike, tie up your quad bike with it, if you've got a quad bike, but made in the US, very, very high quality. $59.95, which I thought was pretty expensive. However, it's got Kevlar steel built into it and the build quality and everything about it is quite like, it's worth the price. Like I can see why they're worth the price. 
yeah, I've used cheap locks before and uh, to my amazement, uh, a lot of the other lads had the same the same locks, not not this one, the same cheap locks and uh, our keys worked for each other's locks. <laughs> they didn't like change the key whatsoever for each lock if you had the same brand. I thought that was terrible. <laughs> this works on a numbers system so you don't have to take the key with you and it folds up and it's got its own bracket seal as well which is great. It's great, great, great. I can see myself using this mainly when we do go wild camping a lot and I don't want to get my kit stolen I might tie it to a tree so yeah this is the medium size so it'll be even smaller and more lightweight if you've got the small size right so straight out of the box it comes with a combination of zero 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 so let's try that you have to push the button on the side push the button on the side then pull it through it'll only let you push the button if uh, you set it to zero 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 and there you go. Now to set it to your own unique combination, uh, it says you have to do a get a push pin and put it in this little tiny hole on the side. There's a tiny little hole on the side, uh, and then you can push that in, set your own code, take it out, then you've set your own code so it's not just like zero zero zero. But yeah, lined with Kevlar steel on the inside, um, it says that this is way more secure than cable locks. Not as secure as a U-lock, however, you can use it for your motorbikes and stuff because you can't cut through this with bolt cutters. If you look at other people trying to cut them, they yeah, you're not gonna get through it. You're gonna ruin it, but you're not gonna like rob your bike or anything. But in comparison to a U-lock, a U-lock is massive in weight, where this is so lightweight, uh, you can just roll it up. It's designed for portable because like to fold it away and stuff. Uh, and it comes in three colors, black, green, and orange. I wanted the green because I'd, in the woods, if I'm ever using this in the woods, I will, yeah, I'll, I'll lose it if it's black. Now that they've sent me their own branded Strike Fire, uh, Fire Steel, Fire Starter, I've been wanting one of these as well. They've seen me upgrading a lot of my kit, which is amazing because uh, the striker I use is in my, uh, like my Fire uh, Mora knife. That they didn't send me this by the way, this is just my knife that I've been using and that comes with this in the end. Now I've been wearing this down so much. I would like one anyway, so if I'm not taking my knife with me, I've always got one I can just shove in my pack. Um, yeah, let's have a look at this. They come in two sizes. This is the large size, so this is gonna last you 12,000 strikes. Made in the UK as well. Look how thick that is. Now this is probably heavier than all the belts and everything. <laughs> but this is gonna last me forever. And you can trust it and it comes with your... <sighs> yeah, you can certainly rely on this. It won't break as well, it's very, very well made. Ho <sniffs> ho! Creates a massive spark. Actually, this is much easier than the Bear Grylls version of this. I used to own that and I chucked that out because I got so annoyed at it. It didn't create as much sparks as this. But it's great that this comes with a nice striker. I'm going to use the hell out of this. You can see this on my next trips. For sure, for sure, for sure. And then they've also sent me their own branded Strike Fire Spork. Titanium Spork. You know what I'm going to say? It's well lightweight as well. I've never had a titanium spork before. I needed this as well. Ta da! And they were so, they were kind enough to send two. So one for me and one for Lily. Very strong. Very, very strong and lightweight. So they sell a lot of lightweight and very strong products. So the go to ones if you're hiking or camping or outdoors in any general. But yeah, very well made. And one of these retail at £10.95. And they only weigh 17 grams. 17 grams. The special properties of titanium is that it's non-magnetic and it's non-corrosive as well. So uh, it should last you for eternity, unless you like really ruin it and drive over it. Or like, yeah, you don't know what you're gonna do with it. Because funnily enough, the, one, the sporks we had before, we were using before in the Lake District, they were, oh, they were shite. They uh, were one pound from an outdoor shop. So this is the expensive side, but like again, like I see is the quality. It's really making me experience the quality. You invest in quality and durability. This will last you 
probably for the rest of your camping career <laughs> or your outings. Um, but yeah, the ones I had before was plastic and they melted when we cooked with them, which wasn't great. So that actually went down here and we ended up using chopsticks, making some chopsticks out of sticks in the end. So very excited to see these on a new trip. And in the future, I want to be shooting in my wild camping trips, a bit of a cooking segment, real camp cooking, and we'll be using these for that. And on the theme of camp cooking, every now and then we want to do a camp cooking show. That would be cool. That would be cool. But they've sent us the rest of the box full of ready meals to try. MX3. And these are really well designed as well. You can uh, you warm them up in the bag, or you uh, pour add boiling water, and that's all you have to do. So they're super easy. Come in all sorts of different things. They've got so much on their website. There's some worth uh, three pound ninety five, and then there's some worth five pound ninety five for the, like the main meals. Uh, once you've put boiling water in there and made it, you can rip them in half. So then. So then you can get your spork in there and you don't have to like struggle struggle in the pack and get it all on your hands and stuff. So you rip it off and you can just eat out of it. It's quite cool. It's quite cool. But let's see what they've sent us. So they've sent me five different meals to try of the uh, MX3 range. It's all on the website. Go and check it out which ones they actually are. But um, yeah. I will be reviewing these on up and coming trips. I'm going to do one or two nighter camp trips this year. I'm going to do a lot more camping this year, a lot more wild camping. Um, just get in the mood, get in the flow and some probably some solo trips as well. I want to do some collaborations as well. I'd love to do collaborations with some other, other wild campers, that'd be great. Yeah, and I'll give you my review of these when I'm actually using them out in the field and see if they're any good. But yeah, they look good. We've got chicken korma, shepherd's pie, carbonara pasta, carbonara, carbonara pasta, pasta bolognese, chili con carne. For the dessert, we've got apple and raspberry compote, vanilla flavor cream. Ooh, I bet that's just custard, you know? Because when I went to Austria, they they called uh, vanilla sauce uh, custard. Muesli with milk and fruit. And finally, four cheeses fondue with breaded toast. And that is it guys, there's nothing left in the box. <laughs> but I've done very well. I'm going to be using all of this equipment on my future adventures so you can tune in next time to join the expedition, follow my thoughts on each product and how I'm using it. Especially the food, I'm very intrigued on the food. And then the striker, I'm going to be using the striker for indefinitely in the future. Comment down below, uh, tell me what products you are actually interested in, if you've used any of these products and what you think about them. What you're interested in basically and give this video a thumbs up if you like it and stay tuned to join the expedition thanks guys bye bye so that is it guys nothing left in the box just some promotion